Hi, this is Lady Lex UK, and this is a Dreams Gadget tutorial. We've got as far as the microchip in Logic and Processing. Uh, now, this uh, microchip gadget is incredibly simple. There's not much to it, but it's very powerful, and you're going to be using this all the time because this is where you put all your other gadgets. Let's open it up. As you can see, what it is is a page. This is where you put all your little programs, all your gadgets can go inside this page. It keeps it nice and neat. And also, if we look at the tweak menu for it, you'll notice there is a power socket. So you don't have to have all your programs all running at the same time. You can turn the power on and off on the uh, microchip and everything inside it will turn on and off. So I've got a little program here. Um, let's change the trigger zone to imp and let's wire that trigger zone to our power socket now um, in the world I've got it in the world at the moment so uh, let's turn it on so if I move my imp into the trigger zone it will turn that light on okay so this is a, a little program now let's put it inside our microchip so we're going to grab our trigger zone pop it in our microchip and grab our light and pop it in the microchip. Now you'll notice that the trigger zone and the light have stayed put, but their gadget representations, their tiles, have added themselves to our microchip. Now you can straighten the wires by pressing X over any wire and it will give you an option to move it around like such and it sort of straightens it out. Um, so that makes a nice neat wire. I'm not very good at neatening my wires. Um, I like to put my microchips um, my gadgets in my microchip in a sort of left to right like I'm reading the page and also top to de top to bottom so start at the top trigger zone to the light and then if there was anything else it would go over here and over here and over here and if there was more gadgets within this it will go underneath we're going left to right up to de up and down like that right let's have a look at this so we've got a trigger zone and a light and if I was to go into the world we go it's still working exactly the same as it was before except now it is in a nice microchip so um if we look at this page it is connected to our microchip the physically connected to our microchip and if i was to turn my microchip upside down um this is also upside down so um you can stop it from doing this if you pin to screen uh, now you can move your microchip wherever you want and this will stay uh, where you left it. It will reconnect to your microchip as soon as you let go. Uh, let this go. Let's put it to, uh, if I put it to screen like this and turn my microchip upside down and then unpin, you'll notice there we go. It will go back to where it would have been before. But if you pin it um, and if I pin it now here, it turns it the right way around, pins it in that position. So that might be very useful for you, especially if you've got a microchip attached to something that's moving. Um, you might want the the actual contents of it just to remain um, stationary and not move about. So uh, that's quite a useful pin to screen option. You might need that. There we go. That's that's something to to bear in mind. Um, now, save position, I've tried this, I don't really understand what it does, because it still moves around, so I don't quite know what save position, let's see what it says in the description. Open this canvas at this position, the button will turn green to indicate position save. If you move it after that, it will turn yellow until you press it again to save the new position. Save position. Okay, so let's close it down. Let's move the microchip over here and open it up. Nope, don't get it. So, anyway, there we are. Uh, you can like you can you can move the um, this independently of your microchip. So you can move it with the microchip, or you can move it around without. And sometimes it's a good idea to be able to move uh, things independently around um, so that you can see them when you open them up so you can add things and change things and move things around. Uh, so that's flexible. 
Right, so we've made our microchip. Uh, we can power it on and off with our power button. It's probably a good idea not to have everything running all the time, so only have things running when you need them to. So send signals to power on microchips as they are needed. And then the more microchips you add, the more uh, the need for this uh, will, will appear. So uh, you may need a microchip that actually controls the other microchips. Um, have a, like a master controller. Um, it's also a good idea to be able to turn things on and off um, for debug purposes. So you might use something like uh, a value slider or a switch um, to turn certain microchips on and off as you need them to. I'm not going to go into the complexities of all of that right now, but um, as you are improving with your uh, logic skills and you're putting in more complicated microchips, the need to uh, control them and turn them on and off will be uh, apparent. Now, um, a good idea to manage your microchips when you've got lots and lots of them is to use color and custom icons and names. So uh, you can change the name of your microchip up here. So, for example, I'll turn that, I'll call that light on. And I'm going to change the colour of my microchip to bright red. That looks quite orange, isn't it? There we are. There we are red. And I'm going to use that light icon because it's going to turn on the light so that I know that the red icons affect, let me say, uh, all red icons in my game are affecting um, lighting in my level. There we go. You can make a decision as to what these colors represent for you. There is no default um, settings for different things. You can make a decision and it's probably good to stick with the same thing for every single game. So um, you'll get used to seeing um, red icons representing one thing, yellow, another, green, another, etc, etc, etc. Also, uh, the icons, they can mean anything you like. Some of them are, are quite obvious what they probably represent, so that represents um, things to do with music, but um, what that means is entirely up to you. What this cloud means is entirely up to you. Um, so you could have one that is to do with the controls, one's that's to do with animation, one's to do with uh, lives, um, ones to do with the score. It's entirely up to you what you use for all of those options. And these are the only icons we've got to use. Um, so um, you'll have to come up with the ideas of what means what and just stick with it. Right, so we've seen our microchip loose in the world. Um, you can also snap it to objects. So I've got a, a block here so I can snap that to that object. So if I had a movement uh, gadget in something in, in, in here, that would apply to this block now. Uh, before, um, it would be loose in, in the world and not connected to anything. Um, but now it's going to definitely um, affect this block. If you remove the um, microchip from something you snapped it to, you'll notice a wire will appear. So it's still connected to um, that block and everything inside this microchip is still going to be affected, affecting the block, um, but it's no longer physically attached, snapped to it. It's attached with the wire. Uh, the other way of doing it, and it's so many gadgets do exactly the same thing, is to use the apply to object wire and attach this to our block. Um, this is probably a, a really good way of doing it rather than snapping it to the surface if you've got a very small object because uh, trying to snap something um, to a very small object is quite awkward but wiring it to it is quite simple so there you go you have uh, the wire option or the snap to option and there we have our microchip right there is one other page in the tweak menu and this is to do with sound so let's put a sound gadget yeah, let's put a piece of siren in there oh let's turn that off um so that when you're in the trigger zone it's going to play that police siren okay so uh, when you put it in a microchip just normally it's going to pick up whatever the sound effect um 
Where's our trigger zone? Our trigger zone is really high. Let's put it down here. There we go. So, let's restart. Is it not working now? <laughs> let's see. Trigger zone. Imp. Yep. There we go. You can see it's I'm in, when I'm in the trigger zone, it's turning on that siren and the light. Um, so if we change the volume much louder. So this will affect all sound effects within this microchip. And you can also set it to various sound channels as well in here. So all of the sound effects inside this microchip will be affected by uh, any buttons that you choose here. I'm not going to go into the sound channel effects until I get to uh, that section. But um, you can change the volume of all of the sound effects within this microchip using this. Now, let's put this up to its 100% volume. So that's 100% volume if you was to just to do that one normal. And then we'll do 100% volume in there. Much louder. So if your fuel sound effect is really quiet, um, maybe, in, and, and you've got it like loose in the world, maybe it's a good idea to um, instead put it in a microchip, separate microchip, and fiddle about with the volume here. So you get a much louder volume option if you have it inside a microchip. So there's a tip. If you've got very quiet sound effects and you want them to be louder, uh, pop them in a microchip and use the volume on page two of the treat menu. So there we go. That's it really for the microchip. I hope that was useful to you and I'll catch you in your dream.